What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Bachelor Tea Party, and we are breaking down everything that went down in hometowns. I'm Zuri Hall, and today we are joined by Avonlea Elkins. Hello. As well as, of course, Ashley Iconetti Haven. Hey, Hi. Ashley. All right, so quickly, before we get into the recap, Tasha and Caitlin, they're going to be returning as the hosts of Michelle's season, which is a great choice. Obviously, uh, these two did their thing over this last season. How are you feeling about the fact that Tasha and Caitlin are coming back for round two with Michelle? I like the consistency of it. I think they've done a really good job. I think they like really excelled at the men tell all. Um, and that is like a hard live show to conduct. And I think it's nice to have girls who have gone through it and Tasha just so recently to be able to relate to. And I think that it's been really nice for Katie and instance, like for Katie, and I, I'm assuming it'll be with Michelle as well. Um, were there instances like we saw this week with Katie in the bathroom and, and Caitlin coming to comfort her? And you just know it's not like somebody who has ulterior motives that you're like, this person is actually here because they've gone through this and like, they want to comfort me. Yeah. I'm excited to see how they do with Michelle's season. So yeah. let's go ahead and jump into hometowns. It went down yeah. last night. Um, we'll kick things off with Blake's hometown date. It seems like he's really close to his family, which is super sweet. Uh, what did you guys think about Katie's conversation with his mom, um, as well as Blake's combo with his sister? Um, I liked Blake's family. If they get like a real r sense of like, realness, I, um, don't, <laughs> this is the worst thing. I yeah. felt like out of all the hometowns, like none of the conversations like really stuck with me. There was like nothing like super monumental, but I do feel like my biggest takeaway from Blake's hometown was that they were encouraging him to say, I love you and to be really open and honest with his feelings, which he can like have some hesitance to. Um, and then he decided not to do anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was actually kind of surprised by that. But at the same time, I don't know that it would have changed things. I do think that watching through this whole episode, Katie it was kind of set on Greg the entire time. Yeah. Avonlea, what'd you think? So hometowns are my favorite and I was really sad. Obviously COVID, they can't go to the actual hometowns. I thought that Blake was, I, I mean, I felt their chemistry. I really did. And after seeing his date with her, I kind of was like, oh, well, no one else has a chance at this point. Um, obviously until Greg later. But um, I will say I kind of saw a little bit of a red flag when he said that he plays darts every Friday and Saturday night. I don't know if you guys caught that, but to me, that was like, wait a second. I mean, maybe that's like Katie's thing. I mean, hey, maybe it's a great match, but I didn't feel like a ton of compatibility, or at least she didn't talk about it as much as she did with Greg later on. Um, I think that it's sad that Blake has so much trouble saying, I love you. And I think him being a veteran, he should kind of know that he can't, he doesn't, shouldn't even expect her to say it back. So it's sad to me that he may have regrets because if she doesn't choose him later, then, you know, he's going to have to live with that. And it's sad too, because obviously he does feel like he was telling everyone else that he's in love with her. And so, um, I think her, I think his mom was really sweet. I know you asked about that. Yeah. I think his mom, mom seemed, she seems so comfortable on camera, yeah. which is kind of surprising for like a family member. I know when they came out to film like the intro for, for me, for my family, we'd always watch the show together. Um, at least the recent season and my family was just like oh I can't believe these families get so awkward on camera and then like they got mic'd up and then suddenly like you forget who you are as a human and how to do or say anything because you're like okay anything could be said or used against me and I just thought like she seemed so real and warm his mom and I thought that she seemed really connected with Katie and Katie kind of even seemed nervous to meet them like she was excited and wanted their approval um so that was all my feelings before, like, obviously the other two dates. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think he needs to say, I love you. Yeah. Time. time to open up a little bit. What about yeah. Justin? Obviously, Justin Glaze's mom and dad didn't come out. Um, they were very clear that they didn't support this entire situation. How did you feel watching him navigate that conversation with his parents? Did you feel bad for him? Like, what was going through your mind at that point? Oh, my God. I, I got so mad for him. Yeah. I know I got chills I was just like this poor man like he's he really does believe in it and he's trying to explain that to them and and say that you know you weren't here you don't understand and it's sad to me that he didn't have the support and I feel like his dad was kind of trying to be a little more 
um, understanding, but his mom was just kind of like, we're not having it. And that, that made me really sad for him because I, it, like you could tell, like he felt like he may not have the same chance as everybody else with them not showing up. But mm -hmm. I thought it was really telling of his character and who he is that he has two friends. I think he said of 12 and 15 years, like to keep friends that long and to be as involved as they were. I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was really saying a lot about who he is. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I wish that they, I wish they would have come and then they could have shown skepticism at yeah. least like seeing how the process goes without just, mm -hmm. you know, saying no before they even understand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think it was weird that he kind of kept saying to Katie that they couldn't come um, without really mm -hmm. explaining that it was like because they had an issue with the process. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. And also just the fact that they do have an issue with the process and he did it anyway kind of shows like, his independence and competence. So I think that's good. I thought it was kind of sad when she said, oh, well, they're not here. Um, you know, I don't know what that means about him being a, a good husband or father or ready for marriage. I thought it was kind of sad that she kind of jumped to those yeah, conclusions, not knowing the situation. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And, and that kind of made me think maybe she's reaching for like an excuse because she does feel with the other two more. Yeah. I don't know. I thought he was a great guy and I love that he was able to express his feelings where uh -huh. the others weren't and he's not going to have regrets. So that's true. We can, get, we can get to more about that, but. No, that's a really good point. He actually yeah. probably seems the most emotionally mature. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree. Especially the fact that, you know, he, he said it, didn't receive it and still was like, I have this huge weight lifted on my, off my shoulders. I feel relieved. Whereas Blake's going to have regret because he didn't say what he was feeling. And, um, later Greg obviously needed that validation and lost it. We'll get into that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But. Moving on to Greg and Katie's hometown day, we will get to how everything oh works for them in just a minute. But before that, yeah. What did you think about how things were unfolding with Greg's family? His sister sending in that video was super sweet. I think that like all the family talk that he's had leading up to this, like it makes sense. They obviously are super close. They're, they have like a nice, uh, there's just a warmth around them. Mm -hmm. And they did seem like the kind of family that you kind of want to marry into. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then it all goes, <laughs> yeah um I thought I thought it was really sweet that the sisters sent the videos even though they couldn't be there and like his emotions seeing that showed kind of their closeness um I I thought it was a little surprising that he hadn't talked to his brother about his dad and well, at least that's what his brother kind of had said and so I I don't know I think that maybe there's some I mean two years ago I think is what he said his dad passed Maybe there's some unresolved like healing that he needs to do before getting into some kind of show that that completely makes you vulnerable and open up. And I don't know, I feel like he kind of may be relying on Katie for his happiness at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's why when, you know, he keeps saying like, she makes me so happy. Like I feel full because he had mentioned in the previous date that they had that he was a little insecure at times and he kind of asked her for that validation and so to me it's like I don't know if he loves her or he loves being loved by her mm -hmm. if that makes You're sense. very perceptive. Mm -hmm. And so yeah really it's so thanks. Uh, I just feel like you know if you're kind of like the flight attendants always say when you get on a plane you have to put your mask on first before you right. can help somebody else. Yeah. Or I'm a scuba diver and like if your partner runs out of air, like you have to have a tank to give them air. And I just feel like he doesn't really have a full tank right now. I think that he's kind of getting that from her. And it's totally understandable. Like his situation, being as close to his family as he is, I think it's, it has to be traumatic. I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to lose my father. And I mean, I'm super close to my family. So I just think that maybe he, maybe he's relying on Katie a little too much and then I mean, yeah. obviously being stuck in a hotel for as long as he's been and being in the process and away from everybody, I, I, I can see how you'd start to unravel, but I felt like it was a little scary. You no, know, I, I think you're spot on. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like my initial reaction was that he was completely gaslighting her and trying to get into a situation and blaming her instead of blaming himself or his lack of feelings. 
but uh, we had a psychiatrist on our podcast yesterday mm-hmm. and she wrote us the longest explanation after watching the whole like 40 minutes where I was like, mm-hmm. I think that he was a jerk. I think he was trying to get out of it and, and making himself look better than her. And, and then she like wrote back with like, oh, you looked through it with a sense of more sensitive lens than I did. And it seems like that is the professional's opinion as well. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm not a professional. <laughs> I'm over here like therapist level with her breakdown. I'm just like, okay, doctor. No. Oh my so God. then I don't know. Um, she said basically that like there, there, the trauma of either losing her, his father or another past trauma mm-hmm. made him regress to like a level uh, to, to like a point of life where you kind of expect love, you know, in a certain way, like the love, the the way that you receive love, if it's not to the expectation that you have, you get like insanely disappointed and like Mm -hmm. retaliate. Mm -hmm. So I think what, what we saw was something really, really deep. And I don't know if people are going to interpret it. Like, I think like the average bachelor viewer is going to be like, what a jerk, instead of like thinking about what he is actually going through in his psyche. Yeah, that's a good point. Cause at first I was like, oh my God, stage five clinger alert. But then I was like, I was like, well, okay, let's think about it from his perspective. And if he's never had, you know, if if he's never even talked to his brother about his dad passing and everyone says he, and he said that I haven't been happy since. And then All of a sudden he's on camera opening up to this girl. He barely knows who's dating other people. And she has been giving him honestly more validation than I've ever seen on a show before. And she She continued to do it. I'm falling in love with you energy. I know. Just wait till the end. Just trust me. I mean, I I'm proud of her. I think it's, it's good that she's not telling multiple people she loves them. I think it's really um, kind of her. She seems like a very, very kind, genuine girl. And I think it's, it's good that she's not telling anyone she loves them until the end. I think maybe had she told them that ahead of time before hometowns, and I don't know what the rules are, obviously didn't go that far, if she's allowed to tell them or should or whatever, but maybe he wouldn't have had that, but it's almost kind of good that he did so that she can see that before she signs up for forever, because I mean, he didn't even hear her out. She was trying to oh, explain really, herself. Really good points. Yeah. And that is, so that's, I was going to ask what your thoughts were on how Katie responded to him sort of opening up and tearing up and talking about being in love with her. Ashley, how did you feel about the way that Katie handled what Greg was giving to her and the fact that he confronted her later about it? I think she handled it the way that we would all would, where it was like, she was frustrated because she was like, dude, like, this is a show Like you have to know that I can't say these certain things to you at this point but I'm doing my very best to convey it without like certain words Mm -hmm. so I just I think she was frustrated I think she was surprised at his reaction Mm -hmm. and I think she handled it the best she could again like she's trying to say as little as possible but saying as much as possible at the same time and just for it not to get through to him must have just been so difficult yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, she, I think she definitely felt unheard. She, I mean, her initial reaction is like, what I, I saw, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but several times, like during the first freak out right after he spilled his feelings. And then again, in the room, she kind of had this look of fear in her face. And I feel like it was almost more of like, I like, do what, can I trust myself? I would not have expected this from somebody that I had, you know, she kept, she kept saying to us, like, you know, he's number one, like, I can see myself with him, and I, I think she weird just, that he, is it weird for me to think that saying you're number one, and you're getting a rose next week, would have been comforting? Right. No, and I okay, think that, I, I, that's throw, not what I want to hear. Throw out a conspiracy theory. This is not something that I necessarily believe. I was all team Greg, because I just, loved him for her slash in general but mm-hmm. some people were saying you know is he there for the right reasons and he has his acting past which i don't think is fair like you can 
have a past. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And still want to fall in love. So I don't really subscribe to that notion, but they were kind of suggesting that he's just kind of like playing it up. And I hesitate to even say it because like, obviously there is a lot of emotional turmoil going on. And when you look at it from a really emotionally intelligent perspective, like you two were just bringing up with like his dad and how he could be acting out. It could be protest behavior. Well, then it could make sense or hard turn he pieces out because he's got all the airtime and all of the everything and now this is his perfect way to like leave but heartbroken he, what if you leave that in a that, good light that that's what i was watching yesterday yeah. when i was watching this i was like okay knowing what you know and then the fact that like people think he's everything around reasons and stuff just like try to like block that try to block <laughs> that out um, and watch this with an open mind. But then as time went on, I was like, no, he's gaslighting her. Yeah. Thinking so that he flips this whole situation and like he thinks he comes out as like the good guy, but mm -hmm. it's not. And he just wanted to get out because he didn't feel it. So I don't know. You can go both ways. Exactly. Wow. I, can go both ways too. I didn't know about the acting background. So to me, that like <laughs> if I would have gone in knowing about that, like I probably would have had a different lens. But I don't know, like, I feel like some of his reactions, he was like barely making sense when he went to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And to me, like, I, I kind of saw, it looked like real emotion to me. And I don't know if you noticed this, but as he's like really freaking out, she kind of looks, and it looks like she's looking at a producer because she wasn't looking at a camera and she wasn't looking at him. She just was like, like, what are like, like she could, like, she's just like, what, who is this person? I thought I knew. Yeah. And it, it was, it was so sad for her. And I can imagine why she'd want to leave because if that was her top pick, even though I do think she does have chemistry with Blake, she says she has chemistry with Justin. I don't personally see it, but I just think she's probably like, I, you know, why would I go on if I obviously have been making the wrong decisions and he's doing this at this point. And right. so I don't, I, I don't know. I thought Blake was more ahead of the game than it turned mm -hmm. out to be because mm -hmm. she definitely admits that it was Greg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Were you shocked when you realized in that final moment, like, okay, it is actually Greg going home. It was kind of hinted at in the weeks leading up to this. And she teased, you know, in public forums, like, I, I get my heart broken. Like, you won't see it coming. And then Greg didn't back leave. Were you surprised? Or by the time you watched the, the kind of like meltdown, you were like, okay, it only makes sense that he would walk away at this point. I think I was surprised it was this week and not next week. <laughs> I think that mm -hmm. really kind of mm -hmm. surprised me. Okay. Because now it's like, okay, what's next week gonna right. entail? Right. I was surprised at his flip of a switch. Like, and he even said to her when he went to talk to her that it's, I don't expect you to say I love you, which, okay, then what, what are you expecting? But I didn't like your re non-reaction. Well, again, if she's trying to not give anything away and respect the other relationships, what is she supposed to do? Yeah. And so I was just surprised that that triggered him so much again assuming this isn't an acting episode type thing I just was shocked that 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 was what freaked him out so much yeah. and yeah. especially when she said you know trust me like we're almost done you're getting a rose next week and it's almost as if that wasn't it's not good enough for him he yeah. needed to say like let's run away together now I don't care yeah. about anyone else it's like I mean right. that's a lot to ask of somebody especially or when you know what you signed up for and on a televised production, it's a little yeah, yeah. Right. I guess maybe um, he was hoping for his Clarendale moment, where they just ride off into the sunset. I yeah. guess, but <laughs> at this point, <laughs> maybe. I mean, at this point, if you're thinking logically, I mean, maybe I maybe I think too too business minded on this, but they have to have a couple more episodes to air. Like like there has to be content there, and so yeah. you can't expect. I mean, everyone there knows that. So mm -hmm. if you just wait it out, like Justin, like he, he spoke his piece. He said, you know, I, I'm in love with you, got it out. And he's like, it's great. And he just, you know, at that point, he's letting her make the decision. Yeah. And I don't know. That's Greg just the only give her that reason respect. I'm a little skeptical, like a little hesitant. I'm not minimizing or invalidating his feelings or like some yeah. of the emotional heaviness he's going through, but that they're not like mutually exclusive. I think you can still be like, okay, this is how I kind of like, yeah. out, and I don't necessarily want. And as someone who has been gaslit, I think we've all been there before. I'm not saying yes. he's doing it, 
but some of the signs are certainly there. I agree with Ashley on that point where you're looking up blindside, like, wait, what, 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 what did I do? Yeah. I'm sorry, I think, what's happening? Mm. That's how that We just didn't even give her a chance and he didn't right. listen. And right. to me, not only is that disrespectful, but it's disrespectful to not let her finish those other relationships mm -hmm. and give the other guys closure if it's not them. Yeah, for so, him just yeah. to have that one it's moment not. and to freak out so much from the one moment, I think is like a sign that that's maybe not the person who you want to be in a relationship with it right now. No, you can't yeah, I feel like it would be that moment. Yeah, no, it would or be that back and forth like, all the time. Yeah, if you feel like you can't express your emotions or if you don't exactly respond in the way that your partner wants, you have to brace mm -hmm. for emotional manipulation or hysteria. Like, that's just not healthy so no matter what way it is whether he's there for the right reasons or not it's for the best i think at this point that he exits stage left for katie's sake mm -hmm. because neither of those those options is a good one um okay well <laughs> greg is out of the picture we are <laughs> going to play a round of roses or thorns to wrap things up today so if you like the moment you give it a rose if you didn't you give it a thorn. So the first up, this is just the biggest rose. So which hometown got your ultimate rose? Which one did you like the best? Ashley um, Blake's. Blake's, Blake's gets the rose. Yeah, because I just felt like an authentic authenticity coming from the family. Okay, Avonlea. I I want to say Blake, and I'm leaning toward it because of like I said, I think their connection is at least second best, and I did like the family a lot. I, I can't give him the rose just because he didn't say I love you. So I think the way Justin conducted himself and the way he expressed himself and how great his friends were, I, I would have to give him the rose. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got it. Um, I'm gonna. Doesn't mean I think they're a match. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I'm gonna assume this next one goes to Greg, but we'll see. Okay. Whose hometown gets the biggest thorn? Which one were you not feeling by the time it was all said and done? Avonlea. Wow. Yeah, oh. that'd be Greg all the way. I mean, I feel like he had it. So it was going so, so well yeah. until that moment of just explosion. And to me, that that's a deal breaker mm -hmm. yeah. for me. And then, I mean, of course, I agree with Greg, but it's funny because it wasn't really like the hometown component of the episode. It was like when they mm -hmm. had like their little goodbye, had nothing to do right. with the family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which road, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And your top rose going to Katie's final man, who would you be giving the rose to at this point? No one. <laughs> yeah, no one. I, 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 who I thought was going to be the one is God. <laughs> but it makes me like feel a little bit better because I feel bad. I've been doing all these interviews lately and I've been saying, <laughs> sorry, my <laughs> husband is walking. Um, <laughs> I've been doing all these interviews lately and they're like, who are you rooting for? I'm like, honestly, I feel it with no one. And I just, yeah, and now I'm like, okay, it's kind of validated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's better to be alone than with the wrong person, so I'm going to have to say no, no one. <laughs> um, I'm just so curious to see how this ends, like, when she gives that final rose, you know, like, what is she going to say? Do, Do you think she will give a final rose? No, I think I, I don't any spoilers. I don't, it. okay. I think it's done. Yeah. I think um, that's why Caitlin and Tasha come in. And they say, this is like really shocking, Blake and Justin, but I think they're going to say Katie's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see it. I can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, in another bit of Bachelor Nation, uh, we've got the news on who the hosts for Bachelor in Paradise are going to be. Uh, David Spade, Lil John, <laughs> Lance Bev, and Zaydis Virgin. So how are we feeling about that casting? Rose or Thorne? Well, we got to give it a rose because my friend Lance is in it and I'm very excited to see him do it. It's fun to see like a super fan get to host the show and yeah. David Spade is going to be absolutely hilarious. I'm very excited about that because like he can turn a non-funny situation into something funny and paradise lends itself to naturally being funny. Yeah. One of my favorite things about watching The Bachelor was always watching David Spade's stories actor or his his reaction so I when they chose him I was so excited to hear that it sounds like a lot of hosts though so I'm kind of curious how that's gonna work but I am but curious Rose. That's four like four. yeah this how, is how like, I'm just really excited to see little John and how, how he <laughs> manifests in paradise <laughs> 
Um, all right. Well, thank ladies, you. thank you so much for joining us for this thank week you. on the Craftsman Tea Party. Avonlea, thanks for popping up on thank us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I had fun. Of course. In the meantime, you guys can go check out our Facebook fan page, and we'll see you guys for the next episode of Bachelor Tea Party.